Before we get started, if everybody in the room would make sure that your phones are muted, that would be great. And I'm going to remind us up here, it's nice that we have a little note, but to make sure that we are unmuted and muted in between when we're speaking. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, do we need to, you want to do, go ahead and do roll call? Okay. Commissioner Ferguson. Here. Commissioner Nesbitt. Here. Commissioner Preston. Here. Commissioner H. Wiley. Here. Commissioner L. Wiley. Here. And Chairman McLean. Here. Thank you. All right, good evening, and on behalf of the City of Independence, welcome. For those who wish to speak tonight, please remember to address all comments and questions to the chair and keep your comments brief and on point. If you agree with the previous comments, simply indicate your agreement and move on. To expedite tonight's meeting, I'll ask those of you who wish to testify or believe they might like to testify to please stand to be sworn in. Would either of you like to speak tonight? Okay, why don't you go ahead, we'll swear you in, and then if you change your mind, you don't have to. How about that? All right, if you'll raise your right hand, do you promise to tell the truth before this commission? Say, I do. Thank you. It's just much easier, just go ahead and do it, just in case. Okay, the first agenda, the first item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Did everybody have a chance to read through the minutes? Madam Chair. Yes. I move that the minutes of February 14th, 2023 be accepted as presented. Second. Thank you. And we're ready for a vote. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Nesbitt? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner H. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner L. Wiley? Yes. And Chairman McLean. Yes. Consent agenda has passed. Our next um, thing on the agenda is the case number 23-175-01, UDO amendment number 56, the marijuana facilities. Um, staff, will you give a report? Yes. And bless you, Heather. <laughs> so our favorite topic, marijuana, tonight. Uh, these code sections um, are part of the um, Amendment 3 that had passed uh, that allows recreational marijuana uh, to be here in the state of Missouri. Uh, the code changes that are specifically changed in here, keep in mind we had the, the medical marijuana code already in place, so these will basically be updating the existing code sections. 14-201, which is the general terms, 14-301, uh, which is the uses and the use tables, and then 14-421, which is the facilities. Uh, and we talk about things like security, and I'll cover a little bit about that. Um, tonight, we have uh, Tony Hernandez, our, um, uh, I think, Alec, or he goes by Tony, <laughs> and uh, he's our uh, legal representation on this, and uh, Lauber Law Group did a lot of, pretty much all of the definitions in here. So once I go over this, I'm just gonna kind of hand it to him for some of the more in-depth questions um, because they kind of get a little bit more you know, legal in depth as far as what some of these things mean and what they're there for. And so, <clears throat> again, it's important to understand that these code sections that we're updating uh, is to reflect the voter approved amendment three. Um, and one of the other critical things to remember is that our code can only regulate the time, place, and manner uh, in which the recreational marijuana can be distributed and sold, and it, and it, and it cannot be uh, unduly burdensome. <clears throat> and so keep that in mind when we go through this. A lot of the code ch changes that you'll see uh, probably are mimicked through many c cities throughout the region, um, just because it really is following the amendment language <clears throat> and what's required uh, by that approval. So the first part of this amendment is the definitions, uh, or the general terms, which defines things, and, and there's new definitions in here, basically comprehensive marijuana cultivation facilities, comprehensive marijuana dispensary facilities, and 
infuse product manufacturing facilities, micro-business dispensary facilities, uh, micro-business wholesale facilities. And keep in mind, these are for obviously the recreational marijuana purposes. We still kept in there definitions that talk about the medical marijuana facilities as well. Um, and so those are what's primarily updated. We updated the use tables, <clears throat> which is in section 14-301. Those use tables basically mimic the same zoning districts that we had medical marijuana in. So for example, a lot of these um, dispensaries are allowed in C2 and C3 districts. Um, and then some of the manufacturing type facilities are I-1 as well. So basically they mimic the same thing. It's just now we're updating the code for uh, non-medical marijuana purposes. <clears throat> we lastly, the section 14-421, uh, we do update that code to include facilities, obviously not just medical, um, and we do include some of the security um, aspects of what we can regulate, and some of those sections include things like the lighting requirements, the uh, fencing requirements, the video surveillance, how long that video surveillance should be kept, like 72 hours, for example, and, um, and making sure that they have, whether they're off-site storage units, that they're properly uh, locked and inside a facility. So really with that um, and, and the definitions and stuff that you have before you, that's all I have for my presentation on this. And again, I'll answer whatever questions uh, I can. If not, I'll pass them to our legal counsel. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, one thing I was wondering is that why are we limiting the hours of operation? I mean, because I mean, if you go buy alcohol, you can go anytime, day or night. That's why I didn't know. And I'm hearing advertisements like in Grandview, 24-hour stuff. So that's why I didn't know what the deal was there. So basically, for general businesses, we kept that 10 p.m. or 8, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. hour. We just kept it consistent. If, if I could, if okay. I may, um, when I was going through uh, the medical marijuana portion of the UDO. Uh, the time and place um, was already uh, established, so I just figured that that's what the city um, wanted to keep in place. And there was nothing um, in the new amendment telling us that we needed to change it otherwise, so um, we just assumed that we would leave it as is. Obviously, it's something that can be uh, adjusted accordingly. Uh, the only thing I would say is that it can't be unduly burdensome uh, for the business owners. So if you're making it only open two hours a day, for example, that would be considered most likely unduly burdensome. Um, but technically, there isn't anything preventing us from doing it 24-7. It's just um, we figured best to leave it as is and defer to the city. Well, then my question is going to be if any of these dispensaries around here want to go longer. I mean, I mean, is that... Is that going to be a problem for them because other people are advertising they go 24 hours or all night or 1 a.m. or 3 a.m. or something like that? So uh, the amendment allows cities to regulate these facilities in a time, uh, place, and manner basis. So uh, this would fit squarely within the time uh, aspect of how cities can regulate these facilities uh, as long as it's not unduly burdensome. So. Uh, what Grain Valley is doing, if they're doing it 24-7, um, that doesn't mean that Independence is going to get in trouble if it doesn't do it 24-7. Well, I know that, but this, what I'm saying, what <laughs> we're trying to prove here is that anybody wanting to sell it in Independence cannot, cannot sell it between 10 and 8. So what I'm saying, what if a company wants to sell, like this people in Aver that are advertising Grandview 24 hours on Saturday, Friday and Saturday nights, is there going to be a problem if somebody does that? Or do we need to change this? I mean, if we adopt the code that shows the time frame between 8 a.m. and 10, then they would have to be within the 8 a.m. and 10. That's why I'm wondering yeah. if we should relook at that. I mean, since there is no law saying, I mean, I know on liquor sales, there's a law at, what, for sale for consumption, but this is not consumption at the place. It's like walk out 
alcohol, which is 24 hours, seven, 24 seven. So I'm wondering if we should do something about that and change that. I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't know if that's what everybody else is thinking. I'm saying we're hindering people that are trying, since we're trying to make money on it, so then people, well, we'll just drive to Grandview to get it instead of coming to Independence. So I'm just saying maybe we should open it up so that we can make money on it also. That's the way I see it. Chair? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Question. Is there, I think it's good prudence to have hours, quite frankly. Is there something along the way before city council votes on this that if they so decided to change the time that they could just do that and then vote on it? I mean, they could, yeah. I mean, whatever we recommend today, I mean, if, if we're notified that there's something that they want to change, because essentially once this comes through this uh, planning commission, then it'll go through council, and so it'll go on their council agenda. If there's something that they want to change, then yeah, they can notify us, and we can do that. I was just wondering, the hours are already set at each of these places right now, correct? Currently, it's that's the time that's in the code. Okay. Yes. So, unless they ask, we probably shouldn't go looking for 24-7. <laughs> Madam Chair, I had four other questions. No, go ahead, go, you go. Okay, mine was just questions that flow out of my brain as I'm reading uh, changes, so some of them may not apply and you can just tell me that. But the things that went through my mind were like the rules on ventilation. Um, and so my question is, how will we know? And is this a business license, an annual business license, so my guess would be that there'll be some kind of, like a fireman's walkthrough, something that will let us know that each of these are staying compliant with ventilation. So there would be annual business license. Um, and as far as the, you know, when would we know? I mean, I think it really would just be complaint driven and, and or if somebody happens to be out there doing an inspection and we find out that, you know, you could smell it or, uh, see it, you know, coming out of a vent or something like that. Uh, so so some of the codes will not have built in annual checks or reviews to make sure. So, I mean, pretty much all the business licenses, uh, I mean, they're renewed. If there's a reason to have to go out and do an inspection on it, mm -hmm. uh, then we would do that, uh, especially if we have uh, notice that there may be a problem in that particular uh, location or business. And it wouldn't just be just marijuana facilities, right. it'd be any facilities, so in any type of business. My next question was the rule or code about transporting the product. Um, and it said that anybody who owned it or worked there would be allowed to transport um, and I'm just thinking of, you know, somebody bringing drugs into the state and somebody getting pulled over. So is there going to be some kind of mechanism that shows the police or anybody inspecting that that's a due process, you know, somebody who should be transporting? <clears throat> I'm going to, to take this yeah, one. Yes, gonna, <laughs> I'm going to um, let you take that one. <laughs> so... Um, the purpose of that section uh, is to allow for uh, license holders, uh, people who have state licenses uh, from dispensaries, uh, to deliver uh, a product to a customer mm. uh, if need be. Um, um, you know How it plays out is that generally it would be someone uh, maybe who has a medical condition that would need it Me to be too. delivered to them. Um, but it's not strictly limited to that. Um, it, you know, it says that they would be delivered by a permittee uh, or an employment um, employee of a permittee. So um, ideally, they would have um, documentation showing um, their uh, position uh, with the permittee. Um, and either way, um, with the adoption of the new general uh, ordinances, it, it is still... Um, permitted to um, possess up to a certain amount uh, of recreational, uh, which is three ounces. Right. I, 
the the exact number of medical. Um, I don't have it off the top of my head, uh, but uh, they wouldn't run into issues for uh, transporting marijuana, uh, provided that they're transporting it within the lawful uh, amount. I have two more, Chair. Um, the next section I was curious about was di the disposal. Can you go in a little more detail about what the expectations of the city for disposal is? So the purpose of that is just so that, um, you know, someone, a license holder, isn't going to dispose of marijuana in a way that, you know, it's easily accessible, um, you know, I don't know who goes through uh, garbage, but you know, if someone happens to be a minor uh, and they're going through garbage right. and they come across marijuana, uh, that's what this is designed to uh, prevent. Will it provide any guidance as to what those disposal measures look like? Uh, because that was my concern too, just somebody finding it, somebody retrieving it. So. We just kind of left it at having to be a secured waste receptacle. Um, we didn't really go into more detail than that. Um, we could double check the amendment to see if there's, they go into any more detail about securing uh, the waste receptacle, but mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that it just has to be secured uh, in some manner or fashion. All right, my final question was, one maybe you need to defer, but this seems to be a lot of change. And I was wondering what kind of training city employees, citizens, and or police might get around these changes as we allow recreational use in our city. So I can answer that as far as our department and you know, obviously once this, if this does go through council and gets approved, um, Obviously, we would notify our business licensing division and staff. Um, of course, the police will be updated with the particular code and the you know definitions and what that means. Um, as far as any other uh, department, I mean, obviously, they would you know, we'd be able to answer as many questions as we can. And of course, um, defer to any legal counsel for any particular training that any department feels that they need. Legal, is there any training that you think is needed? Other than what he is uh, describing, um, just disclosing uh, to staff about the new changes uh, that are being made in the uh, UDO and other uh, parts of the general uh, code of ordinances. Um, obviously, um, law enforcement um, would need this is a little bit outside of the mm -hmm. UDO, but you know, law enforcement. Um, your mic on. Can you hear, hear me better? Law enforcement would need to be uh, made aware of the changes that uh, Mitch headed uh, on the offenses aspect, and um, community development would need to be, um, and their staff would need to be apprised of the changes uh, done in the uh, business licensing portion of the edits that were done. Um, that's really all I could say on that. I was going to add, you know, clearly the biggest challenge is the definitions and, under, and understanding what those definitions mean. Um, and that's really the component that we'll have to address with these changes. Thank you. Before yes, we get too much deeper in discussion, if it's okay, I want to go to the public and allow... Um, if you would like to speak. Is there anyone here who would like to speak for this case? Is there anyone here who would like to speak against this case? Okay. I just wanted to make sure we were giving you an opportunity to speak if you wanted to before we just keep going on. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> good questions well then I'd like to make a motion that what that 14-421-05 uh, be admitted 
Is there a second? Oh, let me close the public hearing oh. portion real quick. All right, I'm going to close the public portion. I'll second that motion. And Commissioner Nesbitt made the motion. Commissioner Wiley D made the second. Second. <laughs> uh, my reason for doing that is I don't think we should uh, hinder the people that are selling it their IR operation. I mean, if they want to come to our city and sell it, we shouldn't hinder where, what time and how they do it. I mean, since other cities are letting them do it 24 seven, I don't see why we should not let them do that. So I can say, we're trying to make money on it also. Uh, I mean, for the tax money and things like that. In other words, it's gonna to go to other cities, so. So do you want to attach a recommendation to this? No, I just think it ought to just be taken out. That way we're not. I see what you're saying. Not, not. Uh, saying when they can sell and stuff like that when they're going, I mean, it's really going to be up to the owner or the operation when, when they want to be yeah, open. I mean, they don't have to be open 24-7. It's right. just, it's up to them instead of us regulating it. I think it's better that way instead of us telling them, well, you can only operate between these hours. Uh, that's my opinion for that reason. So in this situation, would we do a recommendation for what we think or just, or, or omitting that is satisfactory? I. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I would think you would have to do a motion to amend. That's what I just and did. And then vote on that motion to amend if okay. you wanted to change that. I mean, I would think you'd want to be more specific that you wanted it to be 24 hours. Um, and then vote on that amendment. Okay. And then that would either pass or fail and then move forward with the... Yeah, we got a little excited. Case. Is there a motion to amend? That's what I just made was a motion to amend that. Okay. Yeah, that's So what that is it. Okay. Okay, that was it. So we're good. So I thought you were making it. So my omission, amend it, <coughs> omit it, omit that section completely, hours of operation. Or do so I you need would want to Or do I need to say that? 24 hours. Let, let them do it 24 hours. Is that what I need to say? Um, I Legal. would think you'd want it to be specific. I didn't yeah. want it to be specific. I'm just letting whoever operates that they can operate the whatever they want to operate at instead of so us telling them when they could operate it. So I, I would think the best way to do that would be to amend it to 24 hours. To amend. allow for the sale. Allow for allow the for sale. sale. Okay. Yeah. Then, to allow for 24 hour sales. Okay. So then I want to take a motion to amend 14-421-05 to say hours could be 24 hours seven days a week. Is there, is your second? No, I'm not a second. Okay, <laughs> is there a second? Nope. Is there a second? Nope. Okay. Heather, is there a second? Nope. <laughs> okay. okay. So that isn't going to work? That's not going to work. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if anybody else, what, what everybody else is thinking. I mean, I just don't think we should hinder them. I don't think we need those dispensaries open all night. That's just my opinion. I, I, I don't think we need liquor stores open all night. I don't think we need dispensaries open all night. The motion, the, the motion failed. Yes. Yes. No, we're just saying if there's anybody else thought about anything. Yeah. Okay. Is there a, I would entertain, if there's not any more discussion, I would entertain a motion. Uh, one other thing I want to bring up on the security, on security. So is this per state that they have this much security or is it just something we come up with or I mean we're, it's, it seems like to me we're telling people how they need to run their business and I don't think that's right we shouldn't be able to tell I mean I would think they'd have security anyway I mean if I owned a business I would too but I didn't know if that's something we're stepping on toes there or not so uh, cities are required to maintain some uh, security uh, precautions um, but it leaves a lot up to our discretion in terms of where the line in the sand is drawn. Um, we just have to ensure um, security of these uh, facilities 
uh, in some way uh, or another in our uh, in whatever ordinance um, that we decide to go with okay so it's not really a state thing but it's something the state just says we need to no you're saying we need to draw our, draw a line we need to draw a line okay and that's what and this, this is what this you is think? Con this is consistent with the other uh, ordinances that we've done uh, for other cities uh, okay well I just want to make sure we're going along with the other cities I mean yeah. that's why I brought up the 24 7 because other cities are doing it, so that's why I just want to yeah. make sure and I was gonna say to you it also kind of mimics some of the things that we had in place for things like donation bins and protecting those and having video surveillance so um, again keep in mind we're, we're trying to keep it within the same confines that we've already had in our code plus also kind of be similar to what other cities are also doing as well the goal obviously isn't to be overly burdensome also so. okay i just want to double check on that thanks the amendment allows us to um you know address aspects such as lighting physical security alarm requirements um, requirements for secure transportation between facilities um, so that's kind of where we uh, wanted to stay within but there is nothing in here saying i mean it says they got to have it but are we going to go check it and make sure this is staying up after being used for six months five years 20 years is it are we, are we going to be able to check this yearly or is that, so I mean, that's what, that's something, I mean, I know the business mm -hmm. license, all you got to do is apply and send in the paperwork and nobody ever comes back out. So that's why I'm wondering if we don't have. Yeah. And I, and I think people, we do a pretty good review on the business license. So, I mean, we do have the inspectors that go out and look at these things. So, okay. um, I know the fire people come out and they yeah. check them. Maybe that's where you're getting your word through that away. Fire does do an inspection as well. Right. Yep. Okay. What about health? Because it is a, I don't know, is, is the health going to be inspecting these places for bugs and stuff like that? I didn't know. The health department? Yeah. The health yeah, department. so any of the facilities that obviously are going to have some component of health because they're, you know, obviously <coughs> distributing something and or manufacturing um, would have a health component to that permit for whatever it is they're building. And so, yeah, they would be inspecting those as well as part of the... Is there, I didn't see anything in here. Is there anything in here that I missed on that? Uh, uh, there is a component in here that talks about health. I don't remember exactly where. I don't remember seeing it. That's why I wondered. I don't remember seeing it either. Yeah, I, I mean, when I went over it, I don't remember anything about And when he started saying something about health, and I think, wait a minute, do we, is there something about health? Yeah. I don't remember seeing that. But yeah, I understand that with, you know, if they came in with a business license for what a, a tenant finish or something like that, that would be part of the normal permit process. Right. Uh, but, but I know on restaurants, we go inspect them. I don't know if we go yearly, six months. I don't know how that, but I want to. Oh, so. sometimes every four months. Okay. Well, <laughs> see, I didn't know if, it, if this is going to be the same way. So that's why I didn't know. If an entity is offering an organic product, then it falls within the scrutiny of the health department to make its usual uh, inspections. But, I mean, it's... Numbers. Sorry. Yeah, when we talk about some of the definitions, um, and that would be in the section 14-201, um, when we talk about the businesses that are licensed by Department of Health and senior services so if there's a health component okay, there that would be associated with any of our permits it would also apply perfect so yeah they'll be going in okay. <laughs> I found where it does say all storage of medical marijuana materials products and equipment shall be in accordance with rules as amended and Paul how do you say that word promulgated by the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services and that's under 14-421-03, storage and security, number A. Yes. Okay, but well that says Missouri. How about independence there? Did we fall <laughs> under that? This, is, make... this is independence. Well, I know, but I yeah. mean, that's when we go inspect it. That's what y yeah, more than likely if there's going to be a, a Missouri gonna be, health. There's going to be some so. additional rules issued by the Department of Health and Senior Services. Um, when medical passed a couple years back, they didn't have those. Uh, right when it passed so um, similar to that we don't have the updated uh, rules in the code of state regulations uh, to address 
uh, this new amendment just yet. Uh, so that's why we kind of left it open um, as amended and promulgated by the Department of Health and Senior Services and any successor agency. So, so that, that opened in and does leave us so we can go and inspect and what you're saying. Well, no, that, that describes um, just that. You know. Yeah, it, it describes the state can go do it, but what I'm saying is what about the city? Can the city go do it? Uh, it's not specifically addressed uh, okay so it is portion. not addressed so basically I'm just trying I'm just trying to make sure I mean it's like a restaurant if they have restaurants they got to get inspected by the city well I just want to make sure we can yeah I just want to make so when somebody does come in for a permit to uh -huh. operate one of these whether they need a tenant finish or a building or a new building or a facility if that does have a component of health then that would be part of our normal permitting process so um, how does the city determine if it has a component of health? Is it just, is it set out anywhere? Uh, basically, we defer that to the health division, <laughs> whether or not that permit's going to have it's a... Like it's like it's a consumable, uh, or, yeah. I can't remember the exact verbiage, but it's a consumable uh, or something that you will be ingesting or... And this would certainly something fall like that. that. So this purview. would fall into that, yeah. yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure we get covered. I mean, because it's not in words per se here, it. but I want to make sure yeah. that we're covered if yeah. something comes along, so... I know I'm seeing a lot of thinking going on, so I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes. I'd like to offer an motion for a, in this case. In the matter of case number 23-175-01, UDO amendment number 56, I move that it be appro uh, approved as presented. Thank you. Second, Thank you. And we're ready for a vote. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Nesbitt? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner H. Wiley? Yes. Commissioner L. Wiley? Yes. And Chairman McLean? Yes. Case number 23-175-01, UDO amendment number 56, marijuana facilities has been approved. Thank you, thank you. All right, our next meeting is March 14th. Chair. Yes. I happen to have a short conversation with the lovely couple that you, that swore in, and they came for a rezoning hearing, and I'm not sure that they're here on the right night or if we can find out what it is they came to learn about I bet right or invite now. them back for another time. I was going to say, I, I'll talk to them after the meeting yeah. and find out which one they're looking Thank at. Thank you. Yep. Okay. If there, is there anything for the greater good? Any information we didn't know? or? Uh, not at this time. Um, I just kind of want to let everybody know that I think coming in April, we're going to start seeing some of those short-term rental applications come in. Um, I believe we have, we have five of them that night. So. Yay. And then again, I did include the capital improvements program plan that is on for the 14th of March. It's a big document, a lot of projects in there. Our goal is to have representatives from each of the departments to be here to speak on behalf of their projects. And so enjoy it. Well, yeah, Thank you. I was, I was, I'm sorry to include. I was, I was a little upset last year when we had these because I wanted to talk about them. And we couldn't talk about these. We just had to, it was just like, go ahead and prove it without even talking about them. I'm trying to figure out why that happened. So, I mean, I like to be able to discuss what's happening on them. I mean, we ha I know there's some projects in here, probably been in here for 20 years that have been brought up to council. And why haven't they been done? That's one, one thing I like to get into if I can. Okay. That's all I have for tonight. Okay. This meeting is adjourned at 6.35 p.m.